My name is Amalia Garcia Tan. I am the Swedish representative at the executive board of IFAD. I am a present director of uh, at the board since uh, three years ago, three and a half years ago. And what are your initial impressions of the Dom Helder Camera project here in Brazil? Uh, very positive one, of course. Um, but it's not surprising, given the public policies they have put in place during the last years, and it seems that um, there has been a lot of emphasis, not only to put pub public policies in place, also to articulate them. I mean, and so they find uh, the synergies, and of course, uh, at the community level, <coughs> people being involved and also convinced that they can change things by themselves. But I mean with a lot of public support. And how do you compare what you've seen here in Brazil to other parts of the world? Uh, that poverty is not the same. I mean, I have been in Africa, I have been in many countries in Africa, in other parts of Latin America and in Asia. And, uh, and it is true that you feel that um, uh, it's a definition of poverty. And, um, Maybe poverty in this part of, of Brazil is um, access to education or access to opportunities, access to better standard of, uh, of um, health. But um, I must say that uh, these are not the poor of the poor. Brazil is uh, the sixth largest economy in the world now. It has uh, a, a economic growth of 7.5%, yet the Northeast has uh, the highest single concentration of rural poverty in all of Latin America. It has a relative uh, Gini index of, of 50, and the Human Development Index, when adjusted for inequality, is 50 as well. How and why is EFAD relevant in this context? I think that is a very good question that we need to answer together. The government of Brazil, uh, IFAD management and the executive board. Uh, I believe that IFAD is relevant. Um, how relevant is another issue. And who is going to buy the, the, the relevance of IFAD or to pay for that IFAD to be involved is another question. Um, it's, it's obvious that IFAD had a role to play from the beginning. It's obvious that still IFAD um, can be the, a key player, maybe <coughs> at, at, at least as they present themselves, and it seems also from what we have heard. I mean, they can help to articulate, uh, and also because they come with the spirit of community development, that it seems very, very particular and important to this area. Um, so they are relevant, um, but it's always a question of choices and priorities when you, I mean, it's not IFAD not being relevant in Brazil. The question is, is IFAD more relevant in some other place? Uh, can the government of Brazil do this by themselves, or do they need IFAD? If they need IFAD, are they willing to to pay for it. That is a discussion that has been, is already in the papers that we have received from the board. I mean, at some point, the Middle American countries will need to, we want them to be part of the family of IFA. We want to be them contributors, and we want them also to get part of, of the assistance of IFA. But then it is, okay, what, to what extent? Because it is always a question of choices. And how do you take, uh, you know, during our trip we saw some really uh, excellent natural resource management practices being put in place, and the northeast of Brazil is obviously an area that is, has a high risk level when it comes to climate change. How do you take what we learn in Brazil and, and model it and replicate it across the globe? I, I think that that, uh, that is really also... I mean, if IFA is important for Brazil, Brazil may be also important for IFA. So I believe that is, this is the other side of the coin, that, uh, that um, IFA might learn a lot uh, 
from these communities and that's why South South cooperation is, is also interesting as an idea and how we can institutionalize that because I believe that IFA maybe um, can take that type of, 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 of experiences to other places. I mean, they can be the bridge. Uh, and, and this is something that we will, will have to define in the next coming years. Um, how specific the experiences um, of Brazil can be relevant for others. As, as everything, every context is, is, is unique. I mean, I think that what you can learn is um, yeah, you can you can see, you can learn, but you cannot replicate in the same way. I mean, you can take similar experiences and from there develop your own yeah, characteristics. Can can the BRIC countries uh, lead the the world out of out of poverty? That is a difficult question. We don't know. I mean, out of poverty, I think it is the world. I think they start. Everything has to start at home. <laughs> so uh, I think that there is a lot to be done in their own countries. And I think distribution of income is, is one of the big issues. I mean, we see it in China, we see it in Brazil. Brazil has already had I mean, good progress in that. But they still they said the new, the new president will try to, to tackle extreme poverty. So I think uh, coming from Sweden, from when there is a democratic society in terms of economic I mean, uh, this is this is something that we would like to promote. I mean, uh, this is a democrat democracy doesn't mean only the the right to, to speak and the right to 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 act. It is also the, the, the equal opportunities as much as possible to everyone, and that comes with distribution of income. One of the important uh, aspects of our programs uh, and our funding here is this policy dialogue. Um, and the purchase of public uh, public goods from smallholder farmers is one of the cornerstones of of the national rural poverty reduction program. Um, how do you take that and 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 leverage that information across the globe? Is it something that's replicable in Africa and in Asia? Are you thinking about the programs that they have been put in place, as you say, to buy? I mean, yeah, uh, you know. It depends. I mean, because uh, if you look back in Africa, I mean, everything was owned by the state, and they were the public enterprises everywhere. But the commercialization was done by the state, and it didn't succeed. I mean, there has been back and forth. So, I mean, I believe that the state has to have a role to a certain extent for certain groups. But I think the most important role is to, to really uh, try to uh, give incentives to the, the development. I mean, not I mean, not by public operations, but putting the policies in place that can make I mean, other other all of them, the private sector, I mean, uh, and, and the social, the civil society, to to succeed in the in the development of the country. I mean, uh, the state. I, I believe for sure that the state has a role, but uh, it depends. Uh, it, it has also limits. Can you try to capture for me? your overall view of Brazil's efforts to reduce poverty and the Dom Helder Camera project? No, I'm not sure what you're asking. Just to, to, to try to encapsulate what your impressions are of, uh, of these past four days of, of dialogue with uh, yeah. government ministries, yeah, dialogue yeah, yeah, with yeah, uh, yeah. smallholder farmers. Yeah, yeah. that... Um Everything starts with political will <laughs> and, uh, and and the commitment, and if you and with a clear vision of what you want to achieve, and that's what Brazil has had for the last years, and um, and they have succeeded, and now they are in a new a I mean a new stage, and that's why I said okay we have we have succeeded in from a zero, but now we have I mean still pockets that we have to make. Have to need another type of policies, another type of, 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 of support, and I believe also it is a question of time. I mean, I, I, sometimes some generations, some groups, I mean, will not succeed, I mean, or will, will be helped by the state only as transfers and so on, 
but I mean the, the, the big issue, the big question is not this generation, but it is how to help the next generation and the next one to be able to be on, on, on their own.